Hi friends, welcome to the video where we're doing a little bit of experimentation. We're going to try and uh, basically paint up the details of a cockpit using paint markers. Now paint markers have been around for quite a while. In fact, like a really long time, going back to the old uh, Tamiya paint markers. Um, it's still pretty good today, you can still use them. Uh, one of the disadvantages is the rather large nib, however, which makes detail painting basically impossible. However, they have got their uses. Also, Sharpies, been using them for a long time, and also the other oil-based type pens, permanent markers, metallic brushes, gel pens, they've all been used. However, there has been some innovations Quite recently, we're quite familiar with uh, Molotov markers and their highly pigmented metallics. And these are Posca Uni markers, which have got highly pigmented colours and also they've got varying nib sizes as well. So, what's the advantage of these? How are these applicable to modelling? Well, first of all, the tip of them is very small and that helps us use them in a detailed manner, aka like a paintbrush. And the other property that is pretty amazing about these is the pigmentation. They're very highly pigmented and the best way to demonstrate this is by actually sort of drawing on something like metallic. Even a stone would be even better. But to operate these, first of all, we shake them up because it's like a paint inside there, nearly. Then we activate the nib. And I'm just going to show you basically how pigmented these are. You can write on metal with them and stone, and wood, and of course, for our application, plastic. So what we're going to do is take a kit, this one, 172 scale, ME 109, doesn't really matter which kit it is, but this one probably is a pretty good example, because I've marked up, basically the cockpit itself is German grey, however there's details in red, flat black, yellow, some silver, and some blue. So let's try and use the markers to add those detail colours onto this cockpit. However, also we do need to apply, obviously the paint markers don't come in German grey. So we're going to basically construct the cockpit, airbrush it in, the normal German grey colour as called out for in the instructions. And then we're going to do an experiment on basically how the paint marker covers over a colour. And we'll do it twice as well. We'll apply it over something that's gloss and we'll apply it directly on top of the paint to see how it acts, to see how, basically how opaque it is. And uh, we'll do some experiments. So let's get started with this. Okay, so we've done the assembly of these cockpit parts. As you can see, they are pretty tiny. And uh, yeah, I deliberately chose 172 scale because I thought that'd be a pretty good test for these. So all I need to do now is get these mounted and sprayed with the base color. Today we use XF63 for the base color as per the instructions. And we use the fine airbrush. because There's not really that much paint to apply.
Okay, so that's the base work done. Let's just add a little bit of a lighter shade and just do some light shading inside here as well. Okay, that's done. Now, what we're going to do is gloss coat that part, the other ones we're just going to let dry off and then we're going to go straight into the markers. Okay, so the very first marker we're going to test is the black one. Also, point of note, I'm using the MR, this is the finest tip available. I thought we'd go with black because basically this should be the most opaque colour and in theory should be the easiest one to apply so some very very small details zoom in and let's see how this works or otherwise very first thing to do of course is to agitate the marker it's got a little like shaker inside there remember these are paint markers you need to get agitated first okay the next thing to do is to activate the tip so you can see this is brand new you can see that the actual end the tip the nib is totally white it's never been used press down on it a few times There we go, you can see the paint is running. Important as well not to let a lot of paint build up on the end or else we'll lose control of it. Okay, we're going to start off with something really easy which is the grip, the grip of the control column. Okay, that was a pretty easy thing to do. Okay, this, this should be a good test to see how fine or otherwise you can do it. We've only got very small details to paint in here. So you can see one bit's okay and the other bit I've lost control because too much ink's flowed out. So let's see, let's see how that dries off and see if we can remove it and then repair it. I think that's going to be an important test. Okay, as an experiment, we're going to apply Mr. Hobby, Mr. Super Clear Glossy Varnish. Now let's spray the gloss. Okay, yellow should be quite a difficult colour to cover, but we already sort of saw that on top of the metal. Okay, let's try and control the application. It's going on very opaque. And... It's quite, it's not so difficult to, to control. Okay, now let's have a look at the white marker. The white must be the least opaque of all of them. It must be the most difficult one to lay down smoothly as well. So as you can see, this also is giving some really great coverage. It's very opaque white, very clean white. Okay, where I've got this little error here, let's just try and scrape away with it using the tip of the X-Acto knife and see if we can remove some to clean up the edge. Okay, the next colour we're going to try out is the blue. Well, this is a light blue. I couldn't get the blue one, but I will do. Also, this is the much larger nib. Quite a lot bigger than the MR. However, let's see if we can apply that and get some fine detail work done. Now I've applied a big blob there, but you're going to see how that dries and you're going to be very surprised actually how this turns out. Next colour we're trying is red. 
Again, a very difficult color to get opaque. Let's see how this one works out. Okay, so the gloss is that time to dry on the instrument console. I'm going to repeat it, no need to talk, and let's just see if they can be applied on this highly gloss surface. Okay, so this is the gray, and this is in the larger PC-1M. It's quite big, actually. I'll show you the nib. Now, you can get a smaller size. I'm going to get some smaller size nibs as well. There's one in between them, in between this size. It's called a PC-1MC. However, with this gray, I'm going to try and do some highlighting. So let's have a go at that. So we've got some detail on here. Let's see if we can highlight this. Not too bad. I'll do the other pieces like this. Okay, so here's some of the other parts that have been highlighted. Maybe this one doesn't look so good. But I've done all of them with this highlighting just to sort of test them, just to see how fine I can get. Now, there's one other test I want to do now. Can we dry brush with them, with the silver? So that's the next test. Okay, so in order to dry brush, obviously we do need a brush. However, let's just see if it is feasible, possible. Let's take just a small blob of the silver out. Dip our brush in. Get the excess off. Let's hit this... Uh, It appears you can dry brush with it. Okay, so we've got all the cockpit parts painted and detailed with the markers. Now we need to see what happens afterwards. So we're going to apply a varnish on top and also some weathering solutions on unprotected paint marker to see what happens. So the first test will be the console. We're going to use the same harsh gloss varnish. Let's see if anything happens to the paint marker. Let's continue glossing. And finally, this piece we will not gloss. This piece we will not gloss, just to see how weathering solutions act on an unprotected piece of paint marker. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is apply the decals onto the console and onto the seat. Also, let's glue these small detail parts onto the side wall of the fuselage. Okay, just realized that I'm not painted part of the fuel line. Let's color that in with yellow using the paint marker again.
Okay, decals are on, and I'll be the first to admit that's not a fair test of the Posca markers because I've got the lack of varnish to protect them. But we're going to come up with a further test later on. But let's just see how the weathering goes anyways and see what the effect is. We use some panel line accent colour black from Tamiya just for the shading. So this part is the non-glossed. I don't see any effect to the paint marker. The pigment still seems to be there. Okay, finally, let's just wait for the wash to dry and apply a final flat coat. We use super clear matte coat. Okay, here's another test. We're going to go on some transparent parts. We're going to see if we can use the paint markers to detail the gun sights. It's done an okay job, but actually it's quite difficult to get into the nooks and crannies, but in 72 scale, maybe that's okay. Okay, that's the map varnish applied. The cockpit is finished, basically as far as I'm concerned. So we use these markers. What do I think? I think they're absolutely awesome. I really enjoyed using them. Uh, they just quicken things up, basically adding this color and life to the cockpit. What a handy, excellent tool to use. Uh, we're not concluded with tests. I'm going to run some other tests in another video. Also, we're going to have a look at doing a different cockpit. I'm just going to show you that now. Okay, next video, we're going to do the F-16 Fighting Falcon 172 scale again because we've got the black consoles and the grey on top or the white on top. So that'll be the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got something out of this one. Tell me your thoughts. And the other remarkable fact about the highly pigmented ink is that you can remove it with just simple moisture and it's gone.